You're listening to The Man Cave with Lexington Steele and co-hosts Andre Lavelle and John E. Depp right here on L.A. Talk Radio. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is the Man Cave live show here on LATalkRadio.com with Andre Lavelle, Lexington Steele. Uh, of course, we are missing our co-host, John E. Depp, this afternoon. But, of course, he will join us next week. Now, this is, of course, the first week, Andre, of the year of 2015. And we certainly appreciate those who have joined us on this New Year's Day. Sitting to my right and my left are guests for tonight. And, of course, we would like them to introduce themselves. First to my right, we have Mr. Thomas Bell. Thomas Bell. How are you, How you doing today, man? Good, good enough. And of course, the people out there that are looking at you, they want to, of course, get a good look at you. What is, what do you do, Thomas? We, you know, I understand you are, of course, in the entertainment industry. Give us a brief overview of, of you know, what what you do and and and, uh, and what's going on out there for you in entertainment. I'm an actor. I, I currently I have filmed. Well, like Sunday, I, I had Delhi Daycare, Lifetime, Lifetime Channel, taken taken away. That was also a Lifetime movie I just finished. And um, cool. Um, yeah, I, did, I do commercials. I have three major nationals last year. And, you know, I now you also were, IMDb. What was yeah, that? You, um, <laughs> you were on it. Uh, it, it wasn't an infomercial, but it was a commercial for an exercise. Daily Burn. Daily, daily Burn. burn. I was a Daily Burn trainer. Mm-hmm. Um, not a trainer in Daily Burn, but I was actually a, uh, a fitness study participant yeah. and a model for them and, <laughs> and became a, um, you know, I helped promote the product. and. And did very well for me, actually. As a matter of fact. So you in good shape then, huh? Yeah, yeah, I did all right. Oh, I did all right. I did we have like, to get it in, bro. We yeah, in. yeah, yeah. I used to be like 224. Now I'm like a 190. Okay. <laughs> well, you used to be you 224. 224. Went down to 190. I went down 224. A little bit more than that, maybe 228. I went down to 187. I lost like 17 and a half. It's Man, I've been 187 man. since high school. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That was, that was sometime 187 in 1987. Now, moving on, <laughs> um, we have Mickey Gordon. Hello, how are Mickey, you? Mickey, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, you know, Andre introduced me um, to, to what you've done um, earlier today, and, and, and what, a, what a wonderful opportunity to have you in studio tonight. I'm a comedian uh, in California, in Los Angeles, and I'm a tour manager. So I go out and promote products and concert or production tours. Wow, okay. So I do that as well. So now Andre and I are actually working on a uh, what will be a comedic uh, tour, which will affect, affectionately be known as um, Lexus Seal Presents Hardcore Comedy Jam. Yes. <laughs> really? Yes. And that's something we are working on in the 2015, and so perhaps we might be um, uh, you know, requesting your services, uh, Mickey, as we begin to take our com- comedy tour nationwide is That'll also work. certainly enough within Gotta Canada um, and ideally <laughs> in that. Europe. Okay. So that would be, be great. Hardcore, we're going to Brazil? Hey, <laughs> what do you know about Brazil? Hey, I'm yeah, not telling you jokes, you go to Brazil. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're going to start learning some jokes. <laughs> I'm funny. Yeah. Yeah. What, do you know about, what do you know about Brazil, Ricky? Mickey? I just know a lot. Yeah. No, I haven't been there. You haven't been but there? All my male friends who have. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been that. there um, quite a few times, and I can definitely attest that it is the best. <laughs> <laughs> Save the rest. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Because you might not come back unmessed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a rapper. I won't quit the day job. <laughs> so sweet. Now, Dre, you actually um, will be debuting the, what is the third, is it the second or third season of Raising Whitley? Second season. Second season. Yes, and it starts in two days. The third, January look out third. for it, January 3rd. I'm on that show, too. Oh, what? yeah. Yeah, she's yeah, my definitely. best friend. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, no doubt. Yeah. So tell us, now, now, I understand that it is on the OWN Network, yes. Oprah so Winfrey Winfrey's Network. Network. Yes. Um, can both of you let us know, let the people out there know precisely where and when to check in this show? Because they've got to see it. They've got to get a chance to see Andre on a regular basis on national television. It's on own on, is it Saturday or Sunday? It debuts January 3rd on the OWN Network at 7 p.m. Central Time yes, and 9 p.m. as well. Okay, yeah, so you, And you know how they repeat it all the time. Yeah. So it's shown throughout that day, mm-hmm. that evening. So 
Andre will be on there. I'll be on there. But I'm sure Andre will be on there more because I, I was on too. I ain't on there. I won't be on there. No. <laughs> <laughs> you get on there. Shoot. Yeah, you going to be on there. We all going to be yeah, on yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yo, yo, get it, bro. Yeah. We'll make our introductions. You never know what can happen. Yeah. <laughs> so, now, Mickey, are you all, you're also a, com- a comedian as well. Is that yes. correct? Yes. Okay. Now, are, will you be doing any? Will people be able to see you on the stage at all this year? Yes. Or? Actually, I'm getting back into it. I took a hiatus because I was going through some personal issues. So, And I was on tour as well with a product. So mm. I was trying to back balanced them both but I just found out I'm launching another product tour and I'll be in Chicago for a few months so I'm gonna make all my Chicago connections and go down there as well as my Colorado connections so I'll be back getting it in and uh, previously I was with the Kings of Comedy the Queens of Comedy Ah, yeah I was on tour with them so I was their opening act too bad I wasn't uh, televised but Mm -hmm. I'm I'm, I'm making my way back so all right well hey you know Dre what is it we get Mickey involved um, on the stage Sounds like, comes a plan. Time, Sounds like uh, a plan. To get that hardcore comedy. Yeah, I ain't ready on. for me. Ain't ready. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, look, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that we were going to go over, but we definitely, uh, on behalf of myself, um, as always, of course, but on behalf of the show here at Man Cave, Andre and myself, and Johnny Depp, who, of course, is not with us tonight, um, we do want to celebrate um, this incoming new year with the hopes that it will be um, in line with what our expectations are. And uh, those things that motivate us, we hope we can bring those things to uh, applicable fruition, um, if you will, in this new year. Um, So without further ado, let's actually... you have any uh, New Year's resolutions? You know what? I I don't... You know, I do have a New Year's resolution for our viewership as well as our um, listeners. Um, I would would encourage people to make themselves um, as aware of current events as possible, whereas... Um, there are a lot of machinations that are going on in major media, which we make, need to make ourselves very well, very well aware of what is um, tangible and what is the superficial. Um, you know, if you hear something that, that does pique your interest, people, in the year 2015, do your own independent research such that very little can surprise you because what you will find, people, is that there are roots um, to everything that you're seeing on a daily basis. So if we see something today, one would ask themselves, why um, um, did these things happen? Or are there things, are there foreshadowings of, of, of things that could happen? I mean, of course, we could not have... Um, anticipated the the downing of flight 8501 certainly we we see uh, mother nature does have um, her periods of disdain for the human race so to speak Uh, so we do hope that people make themselves aware of politics current events um, social events uh, socioeconomic situation circumstance that could affect them and their family on a daily basis and so that was would be what I would encourage uh, but throwing it back to you Dre what would you encourage our viewership and listenership to uh, to look forward to or to look at in 2015 um, lead by example be the best version of yourself that you can possibly be that's it ladies or lady <laughs> to, <laughs> to stop breaking promises <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. like my New Year's resolution, I always say I'm gonna do something. So I'm not gonna make one this year. I'm just gonna <laughs> try to just be positive. Yeah. And we're gonna start training this yes. year. Yes, right? I, oh, yeah. I will say, yeah, Dre, I'm gonna be break. training with you every day, but that's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna lie and say uh, that. So. We, oh, well, look, I mean, you got some options. You've got a guy that's been on television, right. you know, <laughs> as right. a, a okay. fitness model. Um, there we go. You know, <laughs> of course, you know, Thomas. What what would you suggest for the people out there that that um, need some encouragement for 2015. Well, my goal this year, I, I you know, for myself, I can only speak for myself, is that I'm trying to work. Well, I'm working to constantly create a life that I don't need a vacation from. I'm trying to make sure that I can make my money as I move through my life mm-hmm. and enjoy each moment and be very, very in the moment. And don't do, do don't do things if it don't make me money. It doesn't make me better as a person. It doesn't make me feel good. I'm not gonna do. So, so you want to take it a little bit farther than the adage. If it does, you know, if it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. <laughs> it's it's right. a little bit further than dollars. You know, <laughs> yeah. Dollars serve the person, dollars, serve a purpose because it, and they do make a lot of sense. But <laughs> you know, <laughs> but um, I think that you know, it's just a means to an end. Overall, I just want to, I want to bring in reward to my life that I, that I can share with other people. And I can't do that if I'm messing around with nonsense and if I'm worrying about things in the past or too far in the future. The best way for me to accomplish that is to work in the moment. And if I can remind myself of that every day next year and be in the moment, enjoy those, and, and, and do what I want to do, then I, I think I'm going to have a good year. 
Now, will people Sound be able good. to see you on television this upcoming yeah. year? Yeah, there'll be. I have, I have another film coming out this year. Um, working in a group, and um, the movie's called The Last Appeal. Um, I think yeah, I also had a couple things that released. I, IMDb me, folks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Google like, me, bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. In, 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 in short yeah, form. Yeah, my <laughs> no but, doubt. You know, but I. But this year, I, I do have another film releasing, The Last Appeal, and uh, hopefully, you'll see more of me in television. So. We'll okay, now speaking about television and film, Andre, you actually um, had a, a, a specific um, topic that you wanted us to to delve into. Um, there's a few things that we could cover in the interim, but if you want to launch into that, we can. Okay, uh, well, there's a, a new film that's coming out I saw with Sean Penn, and he's uh, taking on the action genre, and it, it just... It's it's becoming aw I've become aware that there are a lot of men who are more mature, taking on the the action roles. Uh, Liam Neeson in Taken Three. Yes. Uh, Denzel was in The Equalizer. You know, of course Stallone and Schwarzenegger. They've made their return to the action. So. Bruce Willis, I understand. Yeah, Bruce Willis. Well, now, now is he coming in with something well, new or again. his last one, the the last Die Hard? You're but he hasn't. I mean, aside from Die Hard, that's pretty right. much all he's he's been doing just action films, right? Yeah. You know? So I mean, uh, the Stallone as well. Yeah. Expendables. Yeah. yeah Expendables. Mm -hmm. So you know. and that, and Denzel pulled off Equalizer. I mean, yeah. he, he did pull that off pretty well. I was like, man. He get, you know, we get older, and these action figures, you figures, you think they're going to the young guys, but yeah, I agree with you. Lately, it's mm. been the and you mature gotta, male. You gotta also remember, older people, and myself included, we're more focused, and we're more about paying attention to detail. And I think in mm. the marketing field as well, and on production, older people tend to not give you as much of a headache. They're on time, you don't have to babysit them. And then, you know, they're competing with these young cats, and they're making it happen better than the younger so kids. So that's speaking to their experience. Uh, you yeah. Because, you know, set experience makes a big difference on, and also draw. Yes. They also have a history of draw. So it really, you know, with Hollywood, my experience has been, it's, it's, it's been about the money, you know, all the time. And so, and you got a guy that's proven to pull in dollars, you're going to make the movie around them. And, and right, right now, you know, you got Okay, well, to that point, then why would you, you know, how would all of us, have, let's discuss, if, and we, we alluded to this last week here on Man Cave on LA Talk Radio. Of course, people, you can, Contact us anytime at 818 uh, 570 um, and participate in what we are discussing. We talked about last week, or last week we spoke about, um, as you brought up Denzel Washington and the Equalizer. Um, our guest last week brought up the point that um, Hollywood has, has, you know, intimated, if you will, that Denzel Washington does not sell as well overseas or worldwide. I believe that the first they made, they expected somewhere in the areas of a $60 million profit. Um, I understand they did in the $40 million, which does seem low. My numbers may escape me and may be inaccurate, people, and we, of course, encourage participation by way of correction. So if you do have those correct figures, please feel free to give us a call and correct me if you will. Um, is there any, is that myth, is that mythology that a, a, a stalwart, an industry stalwart, certainly mm -hmm. enough an industry icon like a, a Denzel Washington in the role of, of a you know, mature actor right. in the role of an action hero, okay? And we, of course, regard him as, as one of our top actors, if not the top actor domestically. Um, is there truth within Hollywood about the, about the notion that, that Denzel may not sell well overseas? And is that, a, is that an ethnic-specific thing? It's an ethnic-specific thing because basically we're talking about the emails from Sony and why they were saying that more blacks don't get lead roles in certain types of film, the big budget movies, because they're saying that the box office overseas isn't, you know. It's lucrative. Yeah. But then what happens when you have a Will Smith, I would imagine that his sales are going to be up overseas regardless. I mean, exactly. did they make any mention as it's something like that? Or? I think that it was that? Uh, those emails that were leaked, I think they were a, one person's opinion, and that person just probably did not like Denzel or was just thinking of a movie that was probably didn't make a lot of money here in the States. So if they're basing it on that movie, because all of his movies are not hits, mm -hmm. um, but the ones that are, are amazing, and they sell you know, nationwide, just you know, well nationwide, globally, globally, internationally, mm -hmm. everything. So, but a lot of people don't make hits, and they still right. get movies made. Right, right, right. And so, he does get movies made, don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But it's just, I think that it was, um, as I was, 
uh, looking at the news today, I think it was a um, disgruntled employee that leaked these emails, and that was stupid of them to have emails, you know, in the office, and then because a paper trail can lead to a whole lot of damage. Mm -hmm. And so one person's opinion got blown out of proportion, and it's just, you know, he took that opinion and based it nationwide. And so, so you're saying then that this opinion that was espoused by one individual was received publicly as something representative of Sony, right? Um, you know, wholly, holistically. Right. And so now okay. Sony's still looked not at. It's, it's, it's not a publicity stunt. Really? <laughs> I, I'm still mm -hmm. not convinced. Yeah. They're not trying to sell tickets for the interview, but yeah. you know, that's just me. But <laughs> the, <laughs> but but the smartest mating, or the dumbest thing I've ever. Mm. <laughs> but making such a statement. Looking at the, the percentage of films that are driven by ethnic leads mm -hmm. compared to other folks, it, it kind of rings true. Why no, don't no, they? No, what specifically rings true? That black people don't sell? That black actors don't that, sell? That that is perhaps the mindset of Hollywood. Mm -hmm. We can be the co star, we can be the buddy, but being the lead, you know. Okay, now ironically enough, as we speak about <clears throat> gender specific, um, uh, uh, you, you know, in terms of male action heroes. Now, Thomas, you and I were speaking uh, not too long ago in regards to the fact that, um, as you expressed to me in, in our discussion of our notes for tonight, that Hollywood is experiencing um, a, a deluge of leading female or leading black females. Yeah, it's um, a hard thing right Not only now. on television, but also on the silver screen. Now, of course, Mickey, you can speak directly to this. Um, I would ask both of my guests, um, is there a situation where there is a final comeuppance, if you will, for the African-American female actress by way of comparison to the African-American male? Is there, a, is there a discount to the male compared to the female these days? From well, what, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. From what I'm seeing, if you, ain't, if you don't have a black female or black woman on your show, it ain't hot. Mm -hmm. This year, I mean, everything, this, all the top shows have black women leads. I mean, it's a good thing to be here in LA, New York, or anywhere else and being a black female right now. If you can act, if you got some chops, now's the time. This is the most I've seen of, 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 of black women having so much clout on television. I mean, it's everywhere, through cable, through, t through, um, through network, I mean. Okay, but but you they know, followed trends, because mm -hmm. looking at uh, it's hot right now, man. The, I mean, the woman who created uh, um, Shonda Rhimes. Yeah, Shonda, Shonda Rhimes. Rhimes. So she, 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 she's yeah. like the the Aaron Spelling of of television right now. Yeah, yeah. she's yeah. now now qualify her as an actress, director, producer. She's executive producer of okay. Scandal. And okay. Of of Grey's mm -hmm. Anatomy. Yeah, she started with Grey's ABC. Anatomy. Okay. She just she ABC is hers. She mm -hmm. she took over Aaron Spelling's place. So she's dominating the industry right now, and she's putting black women on. And, you know, she's doing a good job. She's playing chess in this game, mm -hmm. and she's winning. Okay, question then. Um, would or, or Let's come to some agreement here. Um, is this not a situation where the actresses that have been around, certainly enough, have shown their tenure and thusly their value to Hollywood? Um, is it just a case where it's the same actors that have been putting in the work, and now they are assuming the roles as they should have been no. assuming for years? I because I, because look, look, I cannot say, I, <clears throat> I will ask you then, if you can introduce a new name, are we seeing new names? I'm, you seeing new names, you know, not new names, okay. but not major stars, like, the, you got, and not just Shonda Rhimes, you got the girl from Sleepy Hollow, you got Tika Sumter. Okay, now you can throw out a name like Taraji Hansen, now everybody knows yeah, who that is, uh, Zoe got, San, San uh, Zeldana. Zeldana, yes. okay. Uh, now, Carrie why, Washington, now don't get me wrong, she's well deserved of her part, because mm. she's always played co-stars and somebody's like somebody's wife well, or bearing in mind that even when they're in a co-star role they are primary actors. right but she's this is every time you think of scandal you she think leads of the Carrie show Washington. right she's the you lead know, it's right. her show. now now what is the other show the sister that runs the show where she is a law yeah. professor is viola, that right? davis. Yeah. viola davis viola right. she's davis. so well deserved yes. because yes. Yeah. right it's right. a hot she's show a brilliant actress. yes and she's not considered a beautiful actress to some people well she's, she's a beautiful, beautiful actress to black people i will say that so who produces that that show. Shonda Rhimes. So there you go. Okay. So, so she's putting us where we belong okay. and where she know we we are that powerful in our world. I okay. see it no different than the 70s. They Shonda's making money for them, so they're giving her a shot. She's taking advantage of it, and other people are jumping on the bandwagon because 
it's hot right it's now. Hot. Right. That's it's all there is. She's so, casting. And they're about making, they don't, and like a few years ago, gay was hot. So every yeah. show had to have a flamboyant gay guy. You know, mm-hmm. it's just, they don't, yeah. they, they don't they just, stuff all the time in Hollywood. They'll do the same thing over and over again until it's worn out. So once they've seen a couple a couple of shows get hot. Right, couple yeah, sick. A string sick. of them start. After Scandal, everything started. What was the other one that wasn't Scandal? It was like Deception or it was some, it was like almost like Scandal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was, they tried to come out directly behind that with something. And yeah, so it that didn't one, last did long. That one, did that one mature? Did that continue? No, no they, they, it that tanked quick. Got, it got tanked. <laughs> but, but I don't want to give shot. I mean, Shonda Rhimes deserves a lot of credit. But you got to also, you know, Tyler Perry's shows mm-hmm. are, are being led by women. Um, I mean, there's various shows through various networks. Even the reality season. Mm-hmm. If you want a hot reality show, you better have some sisters on there. I mean, okay, now now let me ask you guys <laughs> you this: Is this a case where Hollywood is saying, "Look, we have to to acquire the 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 demographic, um, the dollars that can come with acquiring a specific demographic, so cater to them, and of course garner the greatest uh, returns from that demographic?" And I found, when I just in my opinion, I found that the black woman has crossed over, and and so has, and I'm not just yes. making this a black woman, but I mean they've crossed over. All the white dudes I'm talking to lately mm. tell me about their black girlfriends and okay. they're dating. You know, so you're saying that there's somewhat you know, of a reflection of society's of society's yes. view. Okay. I mean, because it's it's it's, it's apparent. Next, it's happening. It's I happening. mean, and they deserve it. I yeah, mean, Viola black Davis. Women deserve it. Yeah, Viola Highly Davis. Um, always fly. Okay. That ain't easy. Kerry Washington. They are well deserved actresses of their roles because you. you we never saw them on a continual basis. We mm. just saw them in movies or Lifetime you know base shows mm-hmm. something of that nature but to see them on a regular series on a prime time network that's huge okay now let me ask you this i'm just playing devil's advocate would you say then that perhaps it is not so much of the ascension of the african-american female actress but perhaps the ascension of the female actress as lead because I will contest yes. that there I'm are a number of primary well. shows that are mention. led by women that are non African American. I was just about to bring that. So as why well. are we? You know, is it fair to make this? Is it fair that the parameters are limited in our discussion? Whereas well, we're saying that it's a black female thing. No, it's I'm not playing a, devil's advocate. No, no, this isn't. A, it was not limited in the discussion. It's just a sudden influx. It's just a, such a change. Right. I would say that it's, it's, it's that dynamic it's, it's, only it's, in its in its in its, in its newness, if you will. In its newness, and mm-hmm. it, it, it makes for conversation. I say it's is, just it's, the fact that there are more, there are few, not enough, but a few black people in power to green light a project or get a project greenlit. That's all it is. Mm-hmm. And I you got to remember also, Shonda Rhimes, she's writing this from her perspective, mm-hmm. her growing up and her. Uh, the way she was brought up. She was brought up with black women in these powerful roles. Mm. Olivia Pope, the real one, is black. You know, uh, how no, do you get away No, 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 Olivia, for those out there that may not be aware of such names that we do share with, with people, um, whom, who is that? Olivia Pope, she's a attorney general, or is she attorney general? She's the fixer, sim- the, the character that... Uh, that's played on the show is based on her. She's okay. yes, she's so she's an actual life, real life person, and she is black. So she's writing just like I'm. I'm. I'm playing devil's advocate as well. Just like a writer, the way he was raised. If you always see us in made parts, he was raised that way. Like you know, let's not. Um, her perspective and her her vision is of black women in power. Okay. The white writers who have the white women in power, that's their vision, that's the way they were raised. Mm. So let's, um, even though it's limited, we have limited positions, we're making progress. Mm. Just like Jamie Foxx in Spider-Man, mm. you know, we're making, pro- and in Annie, mm. you know, we're making right. progress, you know? Will Smith and Jada Pinkett were executive producers of that, so that's how they saw Annie you know, as a little black girl. So everybody is putting their vision to life and it's from their perspective, their dream, their vision. So I don't want to bash the white male writers and the producers because they don't have a lot of black women in power in positions, but that's their vision. That's the way they were raised. Mm -hmm. That's the story that they told when they started screenwriting it. That's what they wrote and that's what they saw. So since this is... America and we're a melting pot, would you say that perhaps they need to meet people other than white people oh, so absolutely. that they can have a different perspective and absolutely. hire some Latins and Asians and you know, other folks to play parts we other than... Through also what you're saying as well as the, the difference in not just black women, but the reason why it was, it's just, like I said, it was newer with black women. Before that, we, Latin, the Latino women were killing it. 
Well, they're, they're, still they're, killing they're still it. killing it right now. But mm. but they actually hit the black before black women got as popular. They had, you know, you had, you know, J-Lo, Penelope, uh, with Selma, yeah, mm. Hayek. Like Devious Maze is on with <sighs> nothing but Latinos and is executive produced by Mark Cherry and Eva Longoria. Yeah. And yeah. she has nothing but Latinos on there. And she has some black people yeah, sprinkled in yeah, there. Yeah, but yeah. I love the way, and look, look how they wrote that with all the Latino women being maids. Mm -hmm. But they're coming up marrying the rich man uh -huh. and, and being in the communities just as well. Because right. they don't think that women of color sometimes can be in these neighborhoods and live that lifestyle and we do mm -hmm. we have engineers architects doctors lawyers in our families as well and i think that's coming through that's yeah, coming through that's because coming through you know and is showing right they're showing our vision and the way we were raised and the way we were growing up with all of these scholars in our family cool. so they're writing from their vision and because that's our story now I mean, right before those stories and it was very true the other stories were you know of hardship for latinos and african-americans we were amazed we were butlers but and we, we still are but don't right. get it twisted yeah, yeah, yeah. All, but right. i'm saying now you yeah. know we have much more professional right. careers ahead of us we got a president and we, you know now all that's come into play we can play more characters because the, the society can believe it right. okay now now do you guys think that um there are economic uh, rudiments to to all of this. Whereas, if you look at a Tyler Perry, um, he of course you know made his bones, if you will, um, you making producing specific for a very specific demographic, right. not necessarily the African American viewership, um, but maybe the African American female viewership. Mm -hmm. Perhaps Hollywood is seeing in, in reference to the money that Tyler Perry's success that he's had by honing um, and owning a specific demographic. There is dollar power. There are powerful dollars to be garnered um, by that demographic. Because I'm not saying that, um, that, that any of this is happening because these women are black, but maybe it's just because the dollars are green. Hmm. I think the popularity, the trending of of, of, of of the black female right now is the big deal. I don't think they the dollars. I don't think the dollars came first. I think the dollars are following, but I just think it's really. So it's you, you're saying that that Hollywood is doing it be, just because they've become culturally, high, culturally modern, you know, hip, aware course, or or yeah. PC, if you will. I think it's PC. I, I, it's it's a, it's it's like a trend. I mean, or, or trend, but yeah. is that trend? Yeah, it's a trend. But it's a the trend. Yeah. Of this yeah. trend. Yeah, I think well, it's, it's dollars. It's, I, I think, think it's dollars. I think it's dollars. I'm glad it is based in, mm. in, in found, founded in, in talent and in, in actual uh, intellect and good looks. But 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 you know, once they get onto a fad, they gonna ride it all the way out. And like Kevin mm. Hart, he's a, a popular, the hottest male comedian hottest male out right now. Right. Yeah. And he's black, and he's black. <laughs> <laughs> but but and you gotta look popular. at there there are waves though because before Kevin Hart it was Eddie Murphy it, we only have one at a time or before uh, well uh, uh, Jamie Fox he crossed over into right right you know dramatic you roles who he but is, but, but you, I'm saying the the thing is we oh, only yeah. have one at a time it's like okay you're hot right now okay he's not hot okay you're the hot one right now you know no because Chris Rock is doing it with his movie. Well, but I, but on Kevin's level, yeah. yes, is I get what you're yeah. saying. Yeah, I mean oh, Eddie Murphy was on. He was. Yeah, Eddie Murphy stayed there for a yeah. minute. Right. And before right. him, it was Richard Pryor. Yeah. So it's like they'll elevate one at a time. Well, well I would contest. You can have a that, Robin Williams and a. Well, Chris and Rock that, has. I, I think Chris Rock has had a very consistent, you know, career. I mean, he's in the he's in the Adam, Adam Sandler movies. Yes. Um, he's in his own stuff. Mm -hmm. So we have Kevin Hart is the perhaps our hardest working man in Hollywood. He's right the now. Samuel Jackson of comedy. <laughs> very, very, very good analogy. <laughs> very, very good analogy. <laughs> but I mean, just like if you look at the adult industry, where people would argue that um, the interracial thing, uh, you know, is is you know is based upon a racism or the racist views of those that are in power, i.e., producers and ownership. Uh, but but you know, I would of course you know, put out there that it's more based on um, what type of dollars you can have or can earn by producing for specific target demographics. If you're in demographic, the greatest demographic is is a white male audience, then you cater to such. Now, along these lines, what we are discussing here, um, this weekend I, 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 I had the unfortunate, um, uh, uh, the unfortunate occurrence of, of going to see Exodus um, told you, starring man. a very good actor <laughs> named Christian Bale, um, directed by like, Ridley Scott. How was it? Um, in my it was humble horrible. opinion, it, it, well, I, I, such strong words may Batman not. Batman is Moses. 
<laughs> uh, uh, I, well, I mean, no, 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 no. Making no mistake. I mean, it, it's not going to win an Oscar, but it is a notion that big budget movies, right? We have big budget movies. Now we have the setting being um, uh, a biblical setting. The, one of the first scenes that you'll see that goes wrong with the film is when they have um, obviously European actors with blue eyes playing people from that region of the world. Right. In which, if we look on a historical level, there hadn't been blue eyes in that region, perhaps in a thousand, within a thousand miles right. of that region. But Ridley Scott, <laughs> of course, a, a very, very powerful director. I do what I want, the hell with history. Specifically, and, and in, along those lines, he said, look, if I hire someone who is visually, you know, perfect for these roles, it may not, of course, return his investment or the studio's investment. So he hires whom he feels will sell. Now people would yeah. argue that that might oh, be a racist attitude. And who came with a package? Because sometimes they package them and they'll, they'll have a few mm -hmm. actors come with them. So there's a lot of parts that play into that. It, you know, it, it could be Christian Bale, and then in exchange for getting Christian Bale, you got to hire three more of our other little smaller newer actors over here. And you know, so it could have been any so part then of those it, things. So that, it could have been, okay, so then it's of course, really let's stopped. talk about that because if you look at, you know, in generally speaking, um, popular culture would have you believe that really Scott is a, a, a blatant and overt uh, bigot and or racist based on his statements. Now, of course, mm. what is the ad is, Andre, uh, better to keep your mouth shut and keep people guessing as opposed to opening your mouth and re Remove removing all doubt. All doubt. Yes. And of course, he did remove all doubt as to his aspirations with, with Exodus. But what I'm saying is, is it indeed a money thing? But it's nothing new. I mean, uh, Native Americans were played by whites back in the day. Uh, uh, Mickey Rooney played an Asian, a very stereotypical, if you look at it now, you're like, ooh, that's really now, racist. Now, what movie was that? This is back in the day, Mickey Rooney, mm -hmm. ooh, ooh, you know, the whole, oh, you know. Okay. <laughs> you know okay. they, I mean, they had white guys playing Charlie Chan. I mean, you know, that mm -hmm. that's their thing. They just elbow about to play James Bond. <laughs> We spoke uh, about that last week. Do you actually think... I want to play the Hulk. <laughs> <laughs> they need a black Hulk. Well, Keanu yeah, Reeves going to play Sam Cooke. <laughs> <laughs> you know? What were you saying about... No, uh, I'm saying... Do you, do you, now, we spoke about that last week uh, with Alba, his consideration. Um, I don't know that there has been studio consideration for that idea. Um, uh, Ian Fleming's James Bond does not make um, any necessities as to whether or not it is... Um, a white Brit. It's a uh, fictional just that character. He's a British character. That would be the it's only. It's fiction. It could be anything. And he's well, from well, well, I mean, he's a British character. He yeah. works for British Secret Service. So at the minimum, he would need to be English. Of course, I just Alba is an Englishman. Right. He sure is. Sean Connery was Scottish. Potential. He's not even English. Well, exactly. So I think it's potential because, first of all, the shockness of hiring a black man will get people in the seats to see if we know he they're going to take all the love scenes out that's for sure if he can fulfill <laughs> the bill mm. so i'm gonna go watch if he if he does this it's, it's going to be history certainly history history making but do you think that there may be somewhat of a backlash and i will offer you an example course. by way of this um the and, and we'll go into this shortly but star wars released an 88 second teaser in which the commercial opened up with a black stormtrooper, mm -hmm. and um, um, you know, they lost. Their you know, mind, people man. lost. Uh, you know, a lot of Ameri <laughs> Americans felt uh, uh, were up in arms about wait, that. Wait, wait, people got mad because there was a black storm people storm got mad. People yeah. reacted online. It's and, a fake because character. It was a black and I know stormtroopers is white. <laughs> yeah, Yo, who so, don't know that? So I'm saying, if that is <laughs> just on a trailer, black. right? Just on not only Lando <laughs> Calrissian. Um, was in Star was in Star Wars a big character in the, in the Star Wars, um, as well as uh, Samuel Jackson was a Jedi. Um, so we have seen African Americans or, or black actors. Few and far between. They don't have us in the future for some reason. But I'm saying, do you think that it, it could happen that Alba <laughs> could, of course, um, in in the end, do you think it's possible they really could land? The bomb because they will have to look for another one. Daniel Craig has only signed on through Spectre, I, which will hit in 2015. I think it just Elba can pull that off. I think Omari Hardwick can pull that off. No, no, um, who is that? Omari Hardwick. Mm. He is the star of Power on Stars. He's too short. They're gonna say he's too short. No, he not. Oh, Omari is. He short. is mm. sexy. He could be on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he could be just a head. No, so a neck and a I head. I think he could pull that off. I, I power. Think, that was the one that was on. 
uh, on Stars. Stars yeah. 50 Cent uh, yes. or, or yeah. Curtis Jackson's production. Yes. Right, right. Yes. Very good, very good actor. Yes. Very good actor. But you know, not for nothing, I, I believe he's too American. I you know, if he could if he could fake an English accent, fine. But um I just Alba is identifiably but a British just Alba actor. played a hood drug dealer from Baltimore right. in Wire. Yeah. I didn't even know he was British. Right. Because he Well they can lose their accent. Exactly. It's hard for us to pick so up he can no no Omari can pick up anything. Hmm, okay. <laughs> yeah. We got an Omari fan <laughs> here. Oh no, 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 no. He's, he's good though. He's good. He's been he good can, for a long time. He speaks Spanish in his in his movie now, in in, mm -hmm. in power. Right. So he can cross over. Hmm. He can who else can do that? There's so many Okay, but let me ask you this. I mean, not to cut you off, but if you look at the situation, that actor in particular, have we seen him helm the biggest of budgets on the silver screen? Mm. I mean, you That's know, a you, story. At, you know, with Alba, at the very least, we've seen him. We've seen there's a comfortability with including him in roles that are not necessarily uh, one would think they would have a black actor. I mean, th certainly enough to see him in Thor. Right. Um, certainly brought a smile to my face well. because I mean, who would have thought? With the right advertisement and publicity, anything can be a box office hit if they push it down our throats like mm -hmm. they do, mm -hmm. and they can, and they have the money to do it. It will be a box. Okay, speaking of black, I think they could do it. Roles. How come then, when Will Smith, as I understand it, Will Smith was originally considered uh, to play the Bond role, and that, of course, uh, was met uh, uh, met, you know, with with a bit of reaction because that Will shut Smith, that down. Will Smith is is your baby brother. He's not. There's no sex appeal to him as far as movies. Will he's Smith? Like, yeah, he's not. He's Mickey, not, I, I beg to differ. I mean, he's obviously I'm talking he about a woman's perspective. Hancock, um, opposite Charlize Theron, uh, where he's already played a superhero. But is you he would, sexy? James Bond is a sexy role. You, right. you don't think of Smith. sex appeal as Will don't Smith. Like, no, lie. seriously, think about it. He's always played Fresh uh, Prince. Whoa, 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 wait now. Sex appeal and Will Smith, I will offer you Bad Boys 1 and 2. As I understand, they're working on Bad Boys number three. Now, you mean to tell me that Will Smith did not demonstrate a tangible sex appeal in the Bad Boy yeah, role? Yeah, but not James Bond is sexy. I understand. Like, yeah. James Bond is a yeah. grown yeah. man yeah. sexy. I, I Will Bond. Smith is yeah. your big brother sexy. Okay. Your, hey, your I, cousin. I, I argue that. Your cousin. He's I'm a straight he male, still by the way. Like but I argue baby. that Will Smith is sexy, but yeah. I get he, that. You know what James I'm saying? Bond. He's not James Bond <laughs> grown man. I'm still not even picturing him as a grown man I'm yet. I'm James Bond. You know, even though he is an adult and I respect everything. Thing he does but you know it just elbow Omari Hardwick they have that grown man swagger okay so is Omari Hard is he old enough then is he is he yeah, mature James enough Bond of a character young. absolutely no James Bond is not young you're looking at James Bond you're looking at that character between the ages of minimally 45 to 55 right. max I think he now I don't think that you know I'm not saying that that your your actor could not play the role I, by way of devil's advocate I'm saying that there may be better um, uh, offerings inclusive of a Will Smith but over that particular act. True, but Idris is in his 30s, and but he looks mature enough mm -hmm. to play in his 40s. So I, I'm having a brain fart right now, but I know there's more black actors that can that are Question. grown. Question. Yeah, Patrick if, Fawcett, guy from the <coughs> Have and Have Nots. Uh, he's been his daddy. Uh, I don't know. Got his character's what, name would you, is, what would you re refer did, to a silver did. screen credit of that? Like, like a James Bond this type of guy because he's a crossover guy. He's black. He, he looks like he could be, uh, you know, bi multi ethnic, and um, he's just, you know he's a strong cat. Watched him play. So if I if mean, he's a okay, let's say they actor. they let uh, they, they give uh, Idris Elba the part of James Bond. Would they change a lot of the the Bondisms? Because he's black, would he get as many women? Would they play into that stereotype, or would they, you know, would would all of a sudden he have a lot of black women? Because they they've only had two black women in Bond. You I know, think Halle the Berry was the would last be one. the same. I just think they're just switching nationalities. I don't think they're gonna change up because the it's, Bond. it's British right. and not American. Right. So if it was an American production. Then it would probably be okay. He drinks Colt forty five now and stuff. No, no, I, I, I don't think I, I don't think that they will. That, that Hollywood would 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 go as far as to change the primary character of who Bond is. Right. I mean, every Bond still stays within the Bond lane, if you will. Right. right. But they have to have at least three women. Bond sleeps with three women per movie. Okay. So Don Cheadle. I ain't even thinking James about who he's sleeping with. I'm just thinking about him delivering. Don Cheadle could play it. <laughs> Don Cheadle he could play it. James Bond. That would be inner Don Cheadle. Nah, I can't see. But well, yo, no, Don, think about it in a different way. You, you, you're, 
think about it in a different yeah, way. Yeah, because I've it, seen Don yeah. play some good stuff, man. Because uh, the, the Pierce Brosnan played Bond, and he don't look like he could bust he was, a grape. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that was a bad choice. You you, like Pierce Brosnan? No, yeah. I, I found him very only from the standpoint yeah. that um, I I don't necessarily see Pierce Brosnan as an ass kicker, if you will. Whereas at least you could neither I nor could Roger see, Moore. Yeah. I get what you're saying. Right, right. Yeah. He seems more smart intellectually. And sophi- uh, I like his sophistication. There's his sophistication, but could you see him taking? I mean, look. I mean, look at you. Look at what Daniel Craig has done yeah, with Daniel the bond. Daniel Craig took it to a whole nother level. Right. You got to bring it hard. Now. You got it now. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, and and not for nothing. I mean, in terms of leading him in, um, nobody's gonna be Sean. <laughs> no, it's possible. It's I, 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 you know what? I would argue. Craig is close. As we get farther and farther away from the era that Shawn Michaels played Bond, <laughs> Sean I Connery. think we have we have <laughs> actually a reconfiguration of the identification of Bond as Daniel Craig. Whereas, or by way of comparison, if you look at what Christian Bale did for Batman, becoming the Dark Knight. Now, Ben Affleck is returning as Batman. To note, he's not returning as the Dark, the Knight. Dark Knight. Right. See what I'm saying? So there is a difference between the way these same actors are put and placed in these roles. So according to that, then Idris Alba would be a very, very good candidate for the role, certainly enough better than a Will Smith. Mm-hmm. I do see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, because there are elements of, of, of edginess, if you will, that maybe a Will Smith may lack by way of comparison to an Idris Alba in concern of a Bond role. If he doesn't get Bond, they are talking about it. They've been talking about it for a while, but hopefully it'll happen. Uh, a Black Panther movie, Marvel's uh, superhero Black Panther. I think Idris would kill it. Okay, now Morgan now. Freeman as James Bond. Damn. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you messed up my stomach. Uh, no, that hey, you messed up my stomach. James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> he like can't hit Bond. you with the left hand, though. No, the left hand would be great. No, but I just want to hear him <laughs> no, say the line, though, no, with that voice. What if he was a villain? That would, be, that, that would be that would be dope. Yeah. Morgan Freeman as a villain. No, let's let, hey, let's take it there then. Do Jane you Glover feel that? Okay, Jordan I want to I want to I want to ask you guys something. You guys I are both in the industry, villain. right? Mm-hmm. Um, what was the industry's reaction that um, uh, Denzel Washington earned his Oscar um, in his role as his most villainous representation to date? I think that uh, basically that was Tell me training day. Certainly enough. Make you no that mistake. Year that of, of course the Oscar he did. was. He, it wasn't his first Oscar. Supporting actor in Glory. No, that was his lead. As, as right. The, yeah. So I'm saying, okay. So how see, did Hollywood how the, receive you, him? You see, who wrote that? But as an actor, I think it comes because to his believability factor. He identified with that character in some sense. Uh, but see, got, if you think about prior years, no one was winning anything, and all of a sudden. We won everything that year. It was like it was the fix even was three in. six mafia yeah. some way. Um, they they got the best song. Yeah. I thought hard out here for a pimp. And, and then Monsters uh, Ball was a BS. I, I think that Monsters he, Ball. He was what? The Halle Berry and Monsters Ball. That was an Oscar robbed of somebody who really did their thing that year. I don't think that was her strongest work. Okay, so that you think horrible. that she she should have won? That's, is that the the fix was she in because that was the year yes, they gave she got that the Oscar. Oscar. Sex scene yeah, she got that Oscar for sleeping with Billy Bob Thornton. Right. Right. Well, it was good, yeah. but the the, yeah, the, the, the fix was that, in that, for yeah, the, the whole, whole show. show. They, they gave her that because look at the whole show. Look at the whole show. Three Six Mafia gets the song. Denzel Washington wins best. Halle Berry wins best, and then they give lifetime achievement to Sidney Poitier. The fix was in. It was the black show, right. and ain't nobody won nothing since except, oh, well, uh, yeah, for, for the help. Got, I don't, but I feel by like saying that you take something away from the performance No, what's her name won? Um, Denzel's girl performance won. earned that. Who's head of the, you didn't there think was so woman, in that training the woman that is head of you the, but he's so? done uh, better work. SAG. But that year, girl, he earned it won still. Something the I don't care last about them, great work every year. I don't remember that her year, name. compared to everything else in the lineup, I would say Jennifer Hudson won an Oscar too. Remember, for her supporting role in what movie was that? Um, where she, it was her first time acting and yeah, singing Jennifer together. Hudson. Mm. So, oh, the um, jeez, uh, her what? name was May something. Not the help, the May. No, not the, no, no, no. no, no. Um, uh, uh, yeah, she won. Sorry. Google yeah, it. I'm gonna look it up. <laughs> right. I'm going to look it up. Give me a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Jennifer Hudson. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer Hudson. Oh, isn't that the one she did where she was singing with, with Eddie Murphy? Was it Eddie mm, Murphy and no. Jamie Foxx. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. That was it. Right. Dream Girls. Dream, Dream Girls. Girls. Dream Girls. Okay. Okay. Dream Girls. Okay. Okay. okay, now Dream one would Girls. argue that she paid a hefty price for that position in Hollywood, not being the, uh, any, not suggesting conspiracy theories as we do Who here on Man Cave. Her price, uh, she lost... Um, 
uh, here you go. Family members. <laughs> yeah. Here yeah, you go. I, that, that, you, you <laughs> I, I do buy. I do buy into um, yeah. into those into those theories. I would also Maybe. say that it had to do with her her career. Or it had to well, do with uh, you know, there's a whole nother obviously a topic for a whole nother yeah, discussion. Yeah, I get but what you're saying. I mean, if if Don't we're familiar with that, <laughs> and, and um, the music industries, uh, <laughs> there are certain payments to be made for a certain descent, certain yeah, people's I ascension. Agree. Um, but of course, we, you know that of course is supposition at best, so we don't have to delve into that. I, I used to uh, see somebody who worked uh, for someone who was on the academy, and back in the day when I used to uh, bootleg DVDs and videos. But she would actually get them for me because she said that they never opened up certain movies, i.e., the black films. So I would get them and do my thing when I was doing my thing. I would say that Training Day, because of the controversy at that time with uh, the police, mm-hmm. they opened it up for a change and watched it and like, oh, this Denzel is pretty good. And because who don't want to see Halle Berry get boned, they opened it up and like, oh, this chick can act a little bit. So whereas they never watched them before, maybe this time because of controversy and their own desire to see some naked flesh, they watched it and said, oh, okay, I'll vote for her. So you're saying that Monsters Ball was initially considered a black movie because it star or co-starred Halle Berry. I mean, or, by, by or perhaps they just wanted to see. I mean, who didn't want to? When, what was the other movie when she showed her breasts for the first time? I didn't. I don't. Dorothy Dandridge. No, no, no. no, no. Uh, with John, with John Travolta. Travolta, which is very good. Sword swordfish. Fish. Swordfish. Yeah. Swordfish. No, she okay. showed him in. Um, a that was an uh, HBO first movie. Time she that was, him oh. Yeah. And sure? she got extra money for it. She, she got, got extra money she got it. Yeah, anyway. and it was a big to do mm-hmm. because she was full frontal. Okay. And most of the people went to see it because they wanted to see Halle Berry's titties. Front That's all it was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who knows? Who can tell me what Swordfish was about? It was actually about cyber hey, cyber terrorism. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I mean, hey, you know, I enjoyed the movie. Um, hey, you, you see know, titties all the time. We <laughs> so no, like, no, I'm but I mean, no, movie. but 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 yeah, it was a I'm good movie. Yeah. And 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 Hallie had a, a, a primary role in that. Yeah. So she's always been around. But you know, most of the people and, and, went to see the titties. But Mickey, you're saying that though that she point. receives her Oscar because she actually um, had a real sex scene with Billy Bob Thornton. That was that's my own opinion. I know a I lot of people think, believe that. Yeah, but I don't year, think she. I don't think that movie was her strongest work. Like, what's that movie that she played where she was in a in a sane asylum? Yeah, mm, she was right. w- way stronger in that. If they want to give her an Oscar for her work, give her an Oscar for Who's something. Who's runners for this year? I don't know. Nothing. I, I haven't thought about it. Have you had and a chance to see Imitation Game? No. No. Oh. Front runner for Imitation Game with, with that dude. Uh, uh, oh, he's where he makes cucumber. Selma. Something cucumber. Selma. No, he's got a really you, funny. He's got, he's got a, a man, name. but he yeah. killed that. And Jake Gyllenhaal killed um, Nightcrawler. No, I, actually, I thought I you didn't like Nightcrawler. I, was, I mean, I no, I did not. No, I did not. <laughs> no, I, I think you know. Um, this is better. The, where he's the, no, I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. I saw. It. I, saw it. I, I think the trailers led people in the wrong direction. I think many people that saw the movie were surprised with what they came away with. Well, you thought it was the X Men. No, 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 character. no, no. But I mean, <laughs> it's just a notion that he was not a likable character in that movie. Well, it doesn't have to be um, likable. He's talking, right. talking about his performance. Right, right, right. right. His right. performance as an right. actor. His yeah. performance as an actor was. I and mean, he changed his look. Oh, man, that dude, man. He yeah. gets in it. He gets in it. Now, Imitation Game is front runner for Oscar considerations, I understand. Yeah, yeah. But, I just saw uh, they sent me the screen the other day. I was, I've was been watching screeners all week. Mm, mm. <laughs> and I'm telling you, that one, get a chance to see it. I, I loved it. That Imitation dude, Game. I'm going to look his name up. Yeah. Imitation game. Now, Dre, you brought up yeah, um, Selma. Name. Yeah. I haven't seen that yet. I want to see it. Definitely on, on the list of to do's. Go see well, Selma. Okay. Now, now people. Benedict Q. Cumberland. Cumberland. That was his name. Now, he was oh, yeah. Play. He used to play uh, Sherlock Holmes. He played. Yeah, what he, else? he was the alien. Name? He was the alien. In, um, That's a heck of a name. Yeah. He has he a never crazy got name. Laid. But, but he. he what was it? Was he in Star man. Trek? Uh, he was in the Hamic, Star Trek Into the Darkness right. killed that. Yeah, yeah. He's I remember his role in Star Trek was very, very good. He's British, right? Star Trek yeah. really is where I first noticed him. He's British. And yes. Yeah. I, I believe a lot that of that he is. good actors come from. Uh, yes. they, they import them. It's like all these actors here and you importing people. He's not a new guy. Well, then why is it then, okay, do you think that Hollywood is saying, hey, we need to expand our own horizons from the inside out? I mean, if you look at the fact that 
um, best director last year um, is a British gentleman who happens to be of African descent. I don't remember his name either. People forgive me. I think me. it's easier to get awards if you're from England. For some reason, you're talking about from over um, here. British actors over here clean uh, shot. Like the they come slave over movie? Clean right, the yes. director of 12 Well, years. a lot of yeah. them, they start out I'm about to go over there and see yeah. if I'm you know. big over there just because yeah. maybe the exchange or something. You know? I just well, think I think it's, it's they, they, they start in theater. Theater is big in England. That's so true. Their, their chops are like, you know, so they can actually. And they don't take, and they probably don't take as much for granted in their study and their work as we as actors. You know, what you we're familiar remember. with, we may take for granted, but as actors, when you're not familiar with a culture, you study it differently and you dig in a little bit deeper. You don't take any of it for granted. But Brad Pitt liked that anything. movie and he was one of the executive producers on it and he wanted it to come to America and it went global. So a lot of actors are putting their money into movies now. They're, you know, producing them. They're executive producing them. They're yeah, doing them themselves. Yeah, because that's where your money, right. like, money out. Yeah, just like Will Smith and Jada did... Um, did um uh uh what do you, Annie? You know they're starting to produce now. Speaking you know, of which, and that, there's power um, in that. The money's yes. in that, and there's power. They see how much money it is. Shares. If they know how much money they made as an actor, so imagine mm -hmm. being executive producer right and check, owning yes. right. And yeah. that's what the uh, uh, um, Ice Cube and Dr. Dre have done. Yeah. they have. Uh, they just did N.W.A. I saw a preview for it today. It looks good. It's for a feature length movie about N.W.A. NWA. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Wow. It looks good too. Um, and their who, sons who are in it. it. Yeah, uh, F. Gary Gray. F. Gary Gray directed oh, it. Oh yeah, yeah. So. F. Gary Gray, black director, mm -hmm. um, director of big budget movies. Now Selma, um, this weekend uh, crossed the one million dollar mark, oh, um, having opened in nineteen locations just for the holiday weekend um, in New York, L. A., D. C., and Atlanta. Nice. Um, on a, on a budget of $20 million, the film uh, chronicles the 1965 civil rights movement. It does star David Oyeloyo, as and that might be a mispronunciation, as MLK Jr., and Tom Wilkinson as President Lyndon B. Johnson. Lyndon B. Johnson. So, and um, Harpo produced it? I think. Who produced it? Isn't, Har isn't it a Harpo yeah. production? Um, Oprah Winfrey? Really? Oprah Winfrey, yeah. Well, that's and Jeffrey And Jeffrey Daniels. Uh, is the is it Jeffrey Daniels? That's the director, right? Mm -hmm. No, the director. Lee is, Daniels. No, no, no. The director, the director is, is Ava, Ava Duvernay. Duvernay. Yeah. Duvernay. Oh, okay. I'm glad gotcha. it wasn't Sorry. Lee Daniels. Sorry, Paul Webb. Disrespect. Yeah. Okay. okay. This release is nationwide, January 9th. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, je uh, the man I'm talking about is producing Taraji's new television series. Okay. Now, American Sniper, by way of comparison, American Sniper starring, um, what's the dude's name? Uh, very popular right now. Um, from the, you know, from, Bradley, uh, Cooper, from Bradley, Bradley Cooper. Cooper right? Bradley Cooper. Opening in Dallas, L.A., New York City. Um, did a million uh, over the same period with only, releasing on only 10 screens uh, nationwide. And that chronic, and, and this is what's interesting not taking anything away from the auto, autobiographical representation of one Chris Kyle about his tour of duty in Iraq, um, certainly directed by Clint Eastwood. Um, you know, this is a story of one man. And in the same period, it grossed a million bucks on, on, in only 10 screens, but in 19 screens over the same time, Selma. So Selma had nine more locations to make the same money. Is this to say that um, there is some truth um, that Hollywood will throw money behind where they, they'll make them the greatest money back. If you look at these comparisons on this on holiday weekend debuts, well, American I, Cyber outperformed Selma. It may not be as fair to say when you say Hollywood, this is a big ambiguous term. But well, it's, I can't. I, I mean, it's, Harpo, well, right? we've so, got to remain ambiguous. So we can't who's distribute. Who's this distribute? Who's the distribution by? Because it goes into promoting the film. Right. Yeah. Who did that? So who in Hollywood are we talking about? So I, before we just say Hollywood in general, we have to figure out did 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 she put or Harpo Films? Mm -hmm. they, they put the money into in the, in, in the getting it properly promoted, and, and it's, or did they just go with the news? Well, maybe they, they produced the film, and and, and someone else is doing the distribution. Maybe, you know, the, uh, the studio right, is doing it. It's a remake as well, doing the where the sniper is new. Well, well, this film is, is a remake. Yes, it's a remake. Okay, now, yeah. the thing about it is... Well, is, it's a real story, so... Yeah. I mean, well, not, and not every movie gets a preemptive weekend before it's nationwide release. Right. Um, I don't know. You guys should tell me better. 
movies that they or the movies that get this preemptive release, is it in anticipation of it being a blockbuster? Why do they release these early? If only for a weekend. Because it's the holiday. It's the holiday. From, People are off yeah. work. They want to do something. They full. Like let's go out and see a movie. To, uh -huh. to, get, to make use of that holiday time. Okay. Okay. So the studios say, hey, we can make a few more bucks by releasing this over the holiday weekend. And then you got to look too. Nationwide later. I don't see Selma being a black film as much as a story that should be told so that everyone understands because the correlation between what went on there and what's going on right now is really, right. you know, so right. I think everybody needs to go see this film. But we're in- Paramount uh, Pictures, that's who distributed it, Paramount. And you gotta look at the, the, the way that it's advertised. I haven't seen well, that much well, advertising on Selma. Well, the campaign as I would think just has started, I mean, I saw commercials today that I hadn't see didn't see yesterday or over the weekend. And I've been seeing Sniper for the longest. Right. I've, and I yeah. just started seeing so yeah, Sniper. Yeah, you can blame Hollywood. Paramount didn't right. promote it as well right. as he yeah. promote, And I believe me, they promoted Sniper. Right. But now, that's, so that's, we didn't see commercials for Selma until after this weekend debut. But black people, we as a black person, we always have to work twice as hard. But so not. Yeah, not but I'm be the devil's advocate in such effect to say that when you're looking at the numbers of the demographic there's a lot more chance that people are going to identify with wanting to be a sniper military person. And it's a and, patriotic and time a patriotic right now. patriotic military. Yeah. And then you got, like, mid... Everybody, white, black, Hispanic... Will identify with trying to watch because we always. Or, or, or could it be that films. could it be that Bradley Cooper is perhaps a bigger star? No, not than at those all. who populate I, Selma. I'm just. I'm I just, just think that, that how many people would sit down to watch someone that's not identifying with, and even in our own culture, some people are, don't care. Don't they see just them. don't care. Not, I, I'm gonna say they don't even care. Mm -hmm. I'm just want to see some people move past, and I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm speaking to. I'm just saying that some people like. I don't need to see another, another Negro, black movie. A Negro and, struggle and we, movie. And we really do, especially like, with all of these police killings, then they can understand our pain. Well, well and now, now this was, of course, ironically coincidental yes. that the release is coming Isn't at such a time. Yes. I mean, you know, no one, they could not have foreseen that well, there would be well, such was the release scheduled before? social economic was the unrest. Was already scheduled before? It well, there, I'm sure more. enough that the release date of January 9th was set in stone before the all of the drama, well enough, yeah, in the drama's been going on. Or perhaps months. they could have moved it up. Is it possible for this to move up That'd be a release? Know. You know, and that's that could take place. And then you have to look at too uh, the issues that were going on with uh, the interview. That wasn't even going to be released, and they released it on the same day. So you had the interview that hype, and it, they both opened on Christmas. So mm -hmm. you you probably took away you know some of those dollars yeah, as well you know and then you know most people are gonna these days go watch the interview especially yeah. with Sony with Sony's hype uh, and, and they made it a, a patriotic duty to go see it don't let these you know uh, foreigners limit our right to expression go see go this see movie it. and support our right to you know and for so this, people for fail for the okie doke Who's, for who no, for, the, for interview. the interview for the yeah interview. right uh, because right. they 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 said you know Korea was trying to, you know, stop our liberties and, and you know, from our, our freedom of expression. That's a nice spin. That's, yeah, they put a spin on it. <laughs> okay, you so know, it was your patriotic lines, duty to go see trying to hold us back. Along those, I definitely want to get to one other thing quickly and briefly before we do exit um, this New Year's Day episode of The Man Cave with Andre Lavelle, Lex Steele, and Johnny Depp, along with our guests, Thomas Bell and Mickey Gordon. Um, the Sony hack, there's new evidence, and this is reported by a security firm by the name of Norse, as in N-O-R-S-E, almost like Norsemen. I don't know if they're from, uh, you know, the Norse regions, if you will. But they claim that they have evidence that the hack uh, was perpetrated by six individuals and not the country of North Korea. And they do identify there have been two U.S., one Canadian, one from Singapore, and one from Thailand. Um, among the six uh, w was one former employee of Sony, by the way, a 10-year mm -hmm. veteran employee of, with a technical background that was laid off in May. Mm -hmm. um, it is said that she, they didn't give her name, but they did identify her gender, that she had been laid off. And they actually had tracked her activities online in social media and what have you. The FBI still contends that it is a North Korean um, cyber attack, um, and it is it does beg the question: Was the North Korean internet, which was interrupted, albeit briefly last week, was that a uh, um, 
um, a, a, a return attack, you know, certainly speared, speared on by the U.S. Um, cyber ninjas. Well, Korea um, never acknowledged or, or took credit for. Well, they didn't take credit for it. Well, they did. They did align themselves by calling it a, a um, somewhat of a heinous act. Um, and they did say that it was, there was something that they said, I, I can't remember the quote, but. But they never said that they hacked it. They, they never they admitted it. I think it's right. yeah. an inside they? job. I, I just yeah. think it's inside job. Do you think it could be yeah. a, a disgruntled know, employee? Yes, they, can, they do that. They, they, there's some evil people in this world, and when they get mad, they, they get mad. And if this was a woman, a woman scorn. Mm. All publicity is good publicity in Hollywood. Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> well, you know, the, the, I think Sony sees it. <laughs> All well, they have spin doctors. That's their job. Yeah. Mm. Take yeah. a negative, yeah. turn it into a positive. Yeah. And the movie was it sucked anyway. So they, they made, made they made talking about everything and everybody. Well, and movie, it created, man. it proved that they could stream online through you YouTube and all these other places and make a buck. So how do they how do they make a buck? On pay per view, okay. Oh, it's, that's how it's been released. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. Um, this you know the cyber intelligence community has raised eyebrows about the FBI identification of North Korea because they felt that the FBI was um, uh, came up to that conclusion too fast. That there's no way that it could have been researched as of finding out who were the culprits so soon in their identification of North Korea. So it's we're up, you know who knows we have yet to find out um, about what is taking place. But here. that's that's the way it goes. I mean, it's no different than they saying it, the guy shot the cops and made it a racial issue versus a mental health issue. They jump on stuff and they throw it out there before they know the truth. Mm -hmm. So everybody, yeah, North Korea is them. They did it. They did it. Mm -hmm. And now right. it turns out they didn't. And now well, well we, don't, we don't. I mean, know. we don't know. Well, we don't, we well, don't know that they did. From Norris that claims they have identified the individual. And if the individual they did, so what? I mean, they shouldn't have the, been the, talking all that personal stuff in the emails. Yeah, they should know better. But not only that, but, but we all do that. I mean, you know, yeah, we do just, do that. But know. I'm saying that the, the, the thought process to say we can make fun about killing a sitting leader of a country. Right. And it's cool. That that's just that's arrogance, man. That's arrogance. Certainly enough. in summation for tonight. Um, there's a number of things that are going out there, and as we've encouraged our listeners and viewers, uh, be aware. Be aware. We hope you're, you're aware whether or not the opinions that have been espoused here in this format uh, are ones that you share. Uh, we do hope that you can appreciate those by way of um, expression of individual opinion. Um, before we get out of here, Mickey, is there anything that um, you can let us know how people can, can stay in touch with you or, or follow you as social media, what have you? Yes, I'm on Twitter at, at Mickey Laughs. You can Thank follow you. me on Twitter. I was on Facebook. I'm not on there anymore for a minute. I'll get back active yeah. as I start getting back into comedy. So, okay. But Mickey laughs on Twitter. And then also, where can people see any of your past work? I mean, can we go on YouTube and pull your name? You I know? will be putting some videos back up there, yes. So I'll be putting some, and it'll be Mickey Gordon, but I'll be uh, posting that on Twitter as well. Oh, no doubt. So you'll see some of my work on there. Because um, what I've been going through this past year, I'm going to put it in a new act ah, and, and, okay. and get that out there. All right. So all right. that'll be something to look forward to. Okay. And Thomas, anything, uh, once again, where we could find you in social media? What have Absolutely. You? you could definitely find out anything you need to know at thomasbell.tv. thomasbell.tv. It tells you everything I've done, everything that I'll be doing in the near future. I have pictures, video, a whole bunch of interesting things I find interesting. Uh, so there's a lot of good stuff up there. If you get a chance, go out there, check me out. Awesome. All right. Oh, okay. It's me. My turn. Hey. <laughs> uh, two days from now, own uh, Raising Whitley. PCW Fit. Check out the website. Everything's PCW Fit. And on Facebook, Andre Lavelle. People, let's make sure that we send out our prayers and condolences to the family members of those who were failed on flight 8501 Air Asia. Um, as we have as it has been ascertained that it was a um, an act of God that has uh, uh, brought down the plane. Um, we do bear in mind that human error does play a part in this, but um, what we do need to be concerned with is that the the people are, are the parts of, of the plane are recovering, that family members, uh, the bodies of, of 
their family members will be recovered mm -hmm. and that they could put their souls to rest. So for the good people here on Man Cave Live on LATalkRadio.com, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. We will be here every Thursday night from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. This is your main man, Lex Steele, on Man Cave Live. Thank you very much. Peace and good night. You're listening to The Man Cave with Lexington Steele and co-hosts Andre Lavelle and John E. Depp right here on L.A. Talk Radio.